So folks, uh, here with us, we have Jessica Robinson from Case Point, uh, who has kindly agreed to share her experiences implementing performance management systems using Profit Dark. We're really looking forward to an enlightening conversation, uh, hoping that it will be beneficial to all the viewers. So thanks a lot, Jessica. Uh, can we start uh, with an introduction to Case Point as a company? What, you know, what do you do? Uh, you know, what are sure. the problems that you're solving? You know, what are the unique aspects of Case Point? We'd love to hear about that. And of course, about you as well after that. Yeah. Sure. Um, Case Point is a um, SaaS company that uh, does work in a very niche area of legal technology, um, which is basically e-discovery, information governance, um, compliance, and investigations. Um, and we basically help attorneys or facilitate attorneys using our technology um, on specific aspects of um, those, those areas. Um, uh, we operate in the government and the private sector um, and in, within the private sector, corporations and law firms um, under different business models or different workflows. And um, I'm currently the VP of operations for client facing services um, at, so that's what I do. Great. And uh, specifically, your role, Jessica, what do you do? So I, I run this team um, and basically I manage people. <laughs> right, I have a I have a set of directors that that are under me um, that then manage their teams of managers and um, uh, analysts and project managers and um, project support analysts um, and trainers. Uh, so anything that's a client facing role from onboarding to um, service delivery, um, any service delivery aspects we have or implementation aspects we have that that the professional service team is doing uh, is the is the team that I run. From my standpoint specifically, I set the strategic um, goals for the for the team and my team, my my direct management team, um, and we execute. So. Great. That's, that's uh, pretty helpful. So yeah. now, uh, in terms of performance management in case point, and so that's one area and strategy execution is another, right? Uh, so what was, it, you know, how are things, can you lay out the, uh, you know, probably can you lay out the landscape for us, right? How do, how are things, what was your vision and, you know, where did you want to take yeah. I mean, like in, in terms of profit, right? In terms of why we started working with profit. Um, yeah, so maybe yeah, that's another question. Well. I think that's, I think we should, I think that's a good place to start. So we okay. actually started with um, profit, not for overall performance management, but we started it for our OKR process. Um, and we needed a way that we could be transparent across all divisions of case point and make sure that we're all, fight, you know, driving towards the same um, overall objectives and goals for the company. Um, and, and we needed a way to do that that's not in spreadsheet form and that's that helps us make it a uniform process across um, all teams. Um, some of our teams, like in any um, SaaS company or startup company, uh, are more mature than others um, in their processes. So when we decided to implement an OKR program, um, we knew as, as anyone, well, not as anyone knows, but we knew that we needed a technology to actually run it. When you implement a technology, it actually helps um, accelerate um, the adoption and accelerate the um, normalization of how those processes are run. And so um, we started looking for a tool that would help us do that in the most simplest way, right? So you need a, a tool right, the tool itself really matters, particularly in terms of adoption. And we're not just talking about adopting the tool, we're talking about adopting a whole new process. And so we need to make that process and the, the way that we worked with that as um, manageable and simple as possible for anybody that's um, rolling into that, you know, rolling into that process, essentially, which is our whole, um, our whole firm. So, 
we did uh, evaluations and we ended up landing on profit. Um, and mainly we landed on profit because of the interface, um, what seemed to be an intuitive ease of use um, and that kind of stuff. And then we, um, we literally rolled out our OKR program. Now, the OKR program was more than just rolling out the technology. We actually had to roll out a whole education system around what OKRs were um and you know what they meant and it's super super important that's something that we learned it's very important that everybody understands what each thing is like everybody needs to understand what an objective is what a kpi is what um results are um uh what key results are what a goal is like there has to be a real definition around those things in order to um in order to roll something like this out properly. And then there's, you know, the whole buy-in and change management aspects of it. And a big part of that change management is making it as easy as possible for people to accomplish this task. Um, and that's where profit came in from a, from a technology perspective. Great. Um, yeah. Oh, because I can keep going. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I think you've covered a lot of ground there. Uh, very, yeah. very useful information. So just a few things. One, in terms of need for OKR, right? Uh, so what was the driving force behind you know, the need for OKR? How did you feel the need for OKR? And how so did one you- of our, Absolutely. So one of the biggest initiatives that we had starting in 2019 was to break down the siloing between um, divisions and departments. And a big part of breaking down siloing, one is to set clear objectives for the company that cascade down through the particular division. So we're all driving the same direction. And the second really biggest thing for breaking down silos is transparency. Um, so transparency into what's happening within the departments, where those things might connect across departments, that kind of thing. And um, OKRs give you a, a tool to do that, right? They give you a mechanism, a framework to operate within from a communication standpoint, from um, just like how we're going to do the standpoint and to ensuring that everything is operating the same way kind of standpoint, but also that gives you kind of like a flexibility to attack wherever your divisions are at. So that's why we um, decided to go with um, OKRs um, because we were on a um, an MBO system for, you know, for like goals, everything was kind of disparate. Um, you know, people weren't, what was important to one division might not be important to another division. So spinning wheels and maybe wasting time on the wrong things, um, you know, that a lot of that was happening. Like some things, it was great. It's great you did that, but how did that impact the company? It was very difficult to to um, categorize all of that. So that's why we went into an OKR system okay. um, or an OKR um, framework. Sure. And once you decided to implement OKRs, um, you know, would be keen to know how big is case point, number of people, and how did you decide to, you know, about where to start, right? And how to scale up the whole OKR program? What was your approach? Um, so, we took an approach where we started with um, our management team um, and really making sure that there was an understanding of what uh, the OKRs, OKRs were and how we were going to try to implement within the management team. And then we cascaded down from there and our first uh, round of doing OKRs stayed centered on the US side. We didn't implement OKRs into um, India until uh, maybe a year and a half later. <laughs> That's its own thing because we're on different uh, business cycles too. So. So, so, which by the way, profit actually helps with. Um, so um, we, that's how we started. And then our first round, we kind of were like, we don't know how to do this. So we're just going to do it and then we'll improve from there. <laughs> so that's that's pretty much what we did. Um, we knew we we had implemented um, profit um, in terms of the technology and um, using it for the OKR process, and then it was a a trial and error type of scenario. And people like me, um, 
who are really interested in this type of thing and in people management and goal management and uh, clear objective um, management, knowing what it does for the entire team, which is gives people a sense of where they fit in the big picture um, from just a, a team management standpoint. I, um, um, I was all on board uh, with this. So I really took the time and the, um, which you do need to take, by the way, you need to take the time to really like, learn the program and really immerse yourself in how it's going to work and uh, really like really technical work. So I, so I started there with my team and I had already been doing cascading um, goals, which is, which is different than the whole OKR process. But like in my mind, I already had a structure of, of how to, how to move forward um, with my team, meaning like down to the, um, our, you know, level one, entry level team members in terms of how they, they fit into the OKR process. Um, so um, in doing that, we, we just did that first one as we know that this is gonna be something that we're going to make mistakes on <laughs> and we'll improve going there. And then that's pretty much what we, we did. So we, it turned into more of a, a process improvement um, scenario so that each, you know, by, by the second, quarter of OKRs, those who were ahead really fell into a groove. And then by the end of the OKR process for that quarter, um, for, for the fourth quarter, you know, it was like, okay, this is how it really works okay. um, type yeah. scenario. We, yeah, we made changes as we went. So far, uh, starting with the leadership team to yeah. scaling up to the rest of the company, how long did it take? How many quarters? How many months? Oh, we got to the rest of the company in the first quarter. <laughs> so, oh, that's, that's amazing. But yeah, in the first quarter, well, not not the India, just US based okay. in the first quarter. Um, we didn't get to the India until the next year. Um, and and the reason that we did that is we're very much a build it while we're flying it type company. Um, and and we're very much a process improve the process type company. Like, listen. You can plan all you want. You can do all that. But until you're actually in there doing it, you're not going to know if it's going to work. And um, we we started the process with a general framework in terms of how we would report back and report up from a management standpoint. And then how we would report up and back within um, our divisions. Um, and that was maybe different for, for different divisions in terms of how it was exercised. Um, and some divisions were more successful than others in that first quarter, right, in terms of using um, the program and being in the OKR framework. And so we basically shared the successes and why we were successful and what we were doing to do it. And, and then we would transfer that into the next quarter, right? Um, and then it got to the point where we understood that we needed to set um, for case point because this might not, not be for everyone else, but for case point, we understood that we needed to set at the company level, yearly objectives, not quarterly objectives, but yearly objectives um, at the highest level so that that didn't have to keep um, um, happening. Because one of the things we ran into was um, the speed of quarterly planning. Um, and if the company was had to go first, they became the bottleneck like that level became the bottleneck of, of our OKR process. Um, Cause I, you know, I'm, I'm in the, pump, the company, but, but that, that management level company, company level, we, we realized it had to be set at a yearly level. And then we would use our quarterly planning to make sure that we're driving towards um, those yearly goals. Okay. And that's, that's great. That's very interesting. So you scaled up within the first quarter in the U S operations. Now, yes. so how many quarters have you completed with OKRs? Okay. Um, so 2020 till now. So we're using it currently. Great. Yeah. So in terms of the results and outcomes that you have achieved because of OKRs, right? Uh, what do you think is the value that Case Point has achieved because of OKRs? I think the, the biggest value it was uh, getting us all on the same page in terms of what the company um, objectives were 
um, so that we're all driving towards a strategy. Like uh, you have to be able to remain flexible in this environment. And, but if everybody knows what the North star is, then that flexibility is not in um, vain. Like it, it's still flexible, but, in, but pointing towards the North star. So I think that that's been the biggest um, change, right? Where you can see measurable differences and specific drive to um, a particular goal. And we can see where we are um, in, in that process. Okay. Sure. And in terms of benefits, I think one thing you are saying is that you are all aligned towards the North Star. That's a big benefit. Yeah. Um, apart from that, in terms of execution right, and achievement of the goals itself uh, with OKRs yeah. compared with what you were doing before, uh, overall, were you executing better? Yes. I'm okay. sorry. Yes, absolutely. Um, not only um, with our, our company-wide objectives, but division objectives and then objectives for individuals management tool as well uh beyond okrs right and and it's really important if you're doing both to understand the difference again between performance management and okr and okr framework and okr management um if you're going to do this well because it can get very confusing um if you don't have the, that clarity um and, and that was what we found out in the first quarter of implementing the performance management, right? And this is where you get down to what's an objective, what's a key result, what is a KPI, and what is a goal. Um, they're different things. And in order for us to manage performance management um, and our OKR process at the same time, right, keeping performance management separate from, in, in substance, from our OKR process, but at the same time, being able to align goals for performance management with our OKR process. So it, it's, you have to be very clear on that. And um, Profit actually made it easy to do um, once you have that clarity. <laughs> once you have that clarity, it becomes super easy to do. Um, the, the tool itself is easy. It's, it's the workflow that you're thinking through that you must, um, that could be compl complex. Um, and so, you know, we we use profit and uh, to do both, um, and we did it successfully. Um, particularly in my team, my team did it very successfully coming out the quarter one of performance management, um, because basically I have that clarity. Um, other teams kind of struggled a little bit, but then again, we do uh, we just do this method of profit process prof, process improvement. And um, sharing how we're doing these things and sharing the definitions so that it can can smooth out. So that's how it went. Great, that's great. So people traditionally advise that you know when you implement OKRs, you know don't bring performance management and OKRs together too soon. Right, that's a traditional advice. So in your case, you started OKRs in a way back in 2020. Uh, mm -hmm. At what point did you decide that OKRs could be one of the inputs for performance management? You know, what was your thought process? You know, bringing in OKRs and performance together. So it's it's really interesting. It's not so much that the OKRs are an input into performance management. It's actually the goals within performance management were key results to our OKRs, right? And and for us, we defined goal. What is a goal? versus what is a key, you know, what is a um, KPI? So this is this is how we define it. Um, objective, that's the, you know, what the company wants to do, where it wants to go. And then that, the key results for um, that objective transferred down to the um, divisions and those key results became objectives for those divisions, right? So that's the main top level thing. But then we said, okay, key results. Key results are divided into two categories. One of those categories is measurable KPIs, um, key performance indicators, the thing that you're driving um, to a direction. And then there's goals. And goals are finite, specific, measurable things that can be done within a particular time period, but that definitely have a beginning and an end, right? So once we define that, that being the case, um, we set 
some goals as our KPIs, but then we had our driving towards our numbers or measurements as the other set of key results. And sometimes those goals would help us push towards that. Sometimes those goals would help us even measure that. Like one of our goals, for an example, was we needed to um, have a system in place that allows us to capture certain key metrics. The goal was create that system, <laughs> right? In finite, now we can capture that and now we can track our KPIs. And now we know how to drive the um, KPI of a key result. So we know what we need to move um, back and forth. So that's, so that's what it is. So our goals became an input that finite, which is what our team members have full control over. They might not have control over the, the key result, but they definitely have control over a finite project type goal. And that's what we did um, for that sampling. So it was very, very clear. You can't mistake or, or interchange these terms um, within the system or for our minds. So within our framework, because if you do that, then it becomes, well, an objective is a goal is like, no, it's not an objective is the higher level objective that we're driving towards. The um, key performance indicator is a is one type of key result that um, we're using to measure our drive towards that objectives. And then our goals are those things that we need to put in place in order to make those things work. Got it. Okay, that's yeah. great. So uh, now, just a few points in terms of challenges that you've faced in implementing OKRs um, as well as PMS in the last three years, what would you say were the big challenges and how did Case Point and you overcome that? I think one of our biggest challenges was being over ambitious in terms of our implementation. So like our first shot at this, we were like, we're going to do quarterly objectives and we're going to make sure that everybody's driving towards them and, and then we're going to, you know, keep that going at a particular cadence and yay, here we go. That's hard. <laughs> That's really, really hard. And if you have a lot of those, then it almost becomes unmanageable um, for, for us anyway, it did. Okay. And, and it was too ambitious um, what what we were trying to implement. And when you do something like that and it's too ambitious, then you have this um, overall sense of it's not working, um, which is a uh, dampener to adoption. Um, so after that first quarter, we realized this is not working. We need to scale back. Um, and so that's what we did, you know, and build a, a little bit out of a time in terms of how we would do this. And, and that's when we came up with, we need yearly, we need yearly objectives. Um, because a lot of things when we were trying to do it per quarter, um, the planning cycle was never ending, right? For the top level management team. It's like, okay, what are the, what are the quarterlies? And you have to start that like two months in, right? Because you have to get to a place where, okay, you've done the quarterly company goal. Now the division managers have to do their goals. And that's not something that can be done in a two day time period. It's like you have, you need to give it time. So, so by setting the yearly goals, um, we were able then to do divisions quarterly and we start a month before the quarter um, starts. Um, and then getting in a, a solid cadence for that, that worked, that wasn't overly ambitious, that was truly cascading. You know, you don't want to make work for work's sake. You want to make sure that the objective um, is something that the, the division wide objectives or the division key results are something that really move the needle for your overall objectives. Great, great. So, yeah, that was our biggest challenge. And, and it's still the hardest thing to do today is, is you have your company objective. And if we're doing quarterly planning um, in our, uh, at the division level, which I found, which I found to be in my, for my team, since we're operational to be good, but sales teams didn't find it to be good, right? They found that if they set yearly, because they have different KPIs, different numbers that they have, different needles that they have to move um, that are much more 
closely related to revenue um, that said, well, if we set it at a year as well, we can then, you know, uh, it, it will go smoother for us. And that's another thing that we really love about profit is the ability to do different things in different divisions and still drive towards the same um, same um, objectives and, you know, key results for the company. Great. Now, probably we'll now come to the aspect of how uh, Profit.co has worked with you, supported with you. You know, what do you feel about Profit.co? Uh, you, know, so, you know, you've been a very valuable customer for us, but it would be great if you can tell us, you know, how, um, you know, the relationship started, the selection process, how did it work? What has been your experience with the product, uh, the people, and, you know, the company in general, if you can share your experience? So I was not involved in picking profit. Okay. Nope. But I was involved in implementing profit in the performance part. So I can't tell you too much about that port part of it, but I can tell you because I'm operational and then working through the implementation process, there came a point when I was like, because again, like I said, I am one of those people that I'm like, I have to delve into this because I'm very serious about it. And here it is. So then it came from the person who was implementing it kind of switched down to me because I was taking it very seriously for my team. I have a large team and I knew that um, implementing something like this would be very helpful to um, my team, my managers and myself. Um, so I did a deep dive. I got individual training from you all. Um, I got advice from you all um, that was always very helpful. Um, and then when I found something that I really needed to make I'll say this work. <laughs> um, I was able to talk to you all and you'd either um, give me, well, how about this way in the current system? Or you would say, oh, hmm, <laughs> maybe we can look at that <laughs> and then make that change. And and when we, th this was definitely helpful during the performance implementation process because of the way we were making goals, the input into um, our OKRs, um, this became very um, critical for us to be able to match so that we're only recording in one place, being able to match the goal to the OKR at the um, at the lowest level. Um, and then you guys made that change. And, and from that point on, it's worked that way ever since so that my team is not constantly filling in, you know, both goals and OKRs, but they are just doing the OKR process. And then the goals are there. Um, the other thing that was really helpful was the time spent with us implementing the performance management um, uh, portion of profit. Um, like really, like this is how you, like the deep training that we got, I got, the HR um, person got, um, we got this deep training in how to implement, how to do the admin, how to build out the framework, how to adjust what you, all that kind of stuff that what you needed to do. Um, that was very critical for the, the performance improvement um, or the performance management process. And if I didn't have that, I don't know if we would <laughs> still be using it. But for us, for me, it was 100% critical and you guys were there the whole time, all the way. And even still, like even through that process, hopefully there was an exchange of ideas and and things that, you know, that we asked for to be put in place and that you saw and um, and you guys put that in place. And then uh, the other thing is the, the surprise stuff, like um, stuff that I didn't ask for that would be put in place, that was put in place. And I'm trying to think of a really great example of it. Um, because I have really great examples of things I've asked for and you guys put in place. But I remember um, doing a, 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 you know, you guys had implemented a new set of, of um, functionality into the tool. And um, I was like, listen, and you kept, you guys keep up to date on that. Like you send me all the stuff. But then I was like, listen, I've been busy. If I can just get a download from you guys um, real quick, wasn't real quick, but um, on things, you guys were very receptive to that um, because that's what I needed at the time in order to learn and not just learn what's new, but learn how I can apply what's new to what we're trying to do. Um, and that was very helpful. I mean, and then one of the most helpful things 
um, that you all did was implementing one of my asks, which was how the rating system um, calculated within the um, performance plan rating system calculated um, across quarters. Um, so when we finally did our yearly assessment and we took all of the quarters from that yearly, I mean, it was so easy for this team to export the report and then it just worked. And I was just like, this was so fast for us in terms of how we wanted to do it. And I wish I can get into full details on that, but like essentially we had waited, um, and this is stuff you already had in the tool. This is nothing I that I asked for, but you, we already, we knew how we wanted to weight our goals. We knew how we wanted to weight our performance indicators. And we knew we needed uh, that different from um, what management had versus what our non-management um, employees had. And um, we were able to pull those weights and then calculate the final point system at the end. Um, and then that helped us with whether people met their goals, what their performance was, and how that impacted their um, their incentive. Um, and it became super simple. And that's something you already had in place, but then you put the you put the measurements how I needed them, <laughs> and which you know, I think everybody should need them that way, but who knows, I'm a tubers on my part. But um, but you guys did that and you did it within time of of when I needed it. So that was fantastic. So yeah. I think the relationship has been really great. I think a big part of working with you is your responsiveness, um, your communication. Um, you don't tell me yes to everything, which is fantastic. Um, and then the other piece is you you give me different options which is also fantastic. And so, you know, I'm, I'm definitely movable. I might have a way of, I'm thinking about stuff, but um, uh, working with you all has definitely expanded how I think about things. Great, thanks a lot. Now, in terms of the product, finally, and I think you mm -hmm. spoke a lot, of, a lot about our customer success and our responsiveness mm -hmm. and some of the requirements that you wanted, how you know we managed to provide and, solutions that we gave, specifically on the product, whether it's the usability or functionality or bringing in OKRs and PMS together, uh, any uh, thoughts or feedback that you would like to share with the community? Sure, and it's a lot of it's very positive. I mean, almost all of it's positive. So right out the box, um, profit is easy to use. It, it really is. I did a lot of self-teaching. It's only in those moments where I got stuck that I was able to that, and then I, you, you know, called on the relationship. Well, how do you do this, and how do you do that? Um, you have a lot of self-help, self-service help in there as well. So, again, super simple to use, like intuitively easy to use once you have the definitions in place. Not just the definitions of what an OKR is, but like, you know, the function where each function is, where administrative is, you know, all of those things. Once you have that in place, it's it becomes intuitive. But then you also have a good help. I guess it's a help um, center, um, which is also fantastic. And then it's only to the point where it's like, okay, now I'm stuck. I don't really know where to go from here. And that's usually a complicated question. <laughs> so it's not, it's not like, it's not the easy stuff. It's, it's complex stuff. Sometimes it's because I'm making it more complex than it is, right? And then I'm like, oh, I'm sure um, Samita has heard me say that a lot. <laughs> like, just because... I'm mixing something up in my mind or whatever because it is is actually there in the tool. That's that's one. Two, the functionality that you actually had in the tool it, that's in profit, the func functionality, and then I guess really the flexibility of that functionality, right? I'm not locked into a plan. I can definitely, anyone can definitely use profit to adapt to the workflow that you have in place 100%, or if you're building it, you can use profit to build a functional workflow out of the box for sure in OKR or performance improvement or performance management. I keep saying perform, but it's performance management. Um, you that functionality exists. And if you're willing to again take an approach of you know process improvement, because it's not it's not really technology improvement, it's it's process improvement and you know, keep an open mind 
um, it just becomes more and more useful. And uh, for me, uh, keeping track of my team um, across now both uh, is quite simple. It's quite easy for me um, as long as my team members are using it, <laughs> which we which we you know encourage them to do. <laughs> so which becomes part of their job. Um, but yeah, the ease of use of the tool is good. The the training very simple, right? Like it's different for an administrator, but the users simple. It is like so simple for them to get and use so that they understand what, you know, they, um, what functionality that they use and they don't have to worry about some of the stuff that, that me and my managers have to worry about, but that basic user is easy, easy as heck. <laughs> it's so, it's so, um, it's very easy, um, which again is critical to adoption. Um, so there was no problem with the team adopting the technology. There was more of a problem with the team ad adopting the mindset of OKRs and um, um, and then having easy technology um, and ease of use technology um, really helps with the whole adoption mindset because frankly, it really gives a way to organize it so people can understand um, how it works and then they can see and they can see where they are all the way through the transparency of profit and you can make it as transparent as you want. But for us, we're, we're like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to open it as much as we can, not the performance side, but at least the OKR management side so that they can just see everything and they know exactly where they are. And so when we're doing our quarterly reviews, it's not a question about what's been done or what's not been done or whatever. It's, it's actually quite simple <laughs> to do those reviews and then have this discussion. And then by the time you get to the end of the year and we're doing the annual where you know it all really counts there's no there's no um again there's no question to what because we've been one doing the quarterlies and we've been going along all the way but they also see where they're at they, they see the comments that their managers are making um they see you know and they can they can also communicate back like i need more resources i need um we need stuff like that that we did not we did not pick the right <laughs> KPI for this, you know, like that type of back and forth interaction, again, not only does it break down regular silos, but it also breaks down some of the communication management um, within within the team, um, which is pretty good. Um, and as managers, we can see where things are connected quite easily. Um, so if something's dependent on another thing, we can actually track that in the tool across KPIs now or across, right, across users now. And that's pretty cool. Um, that's a new feature that that's that we saw that was like, wow, that's that's really helpful that we didn't ask for. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that's really wonderful feedback. And uh, probably the last question, Jessica, is that uh, for case point, what next? You know, what is your vision in terms of using OKRs and performance? Where do you see the organization going in the next quarter, next year? That's a that's a really great question. Right now, we're you know this team is going to go status quo. But what's interesting is that our whole um, organization is doing it's not a it's not a reorg per se, um, but it is a reimagining of how we're going about um, going about um, our our processes at the the company level, right? So we were we moved from this. Um, company focus to this client focus. And now that's that's interesting. So so what I imagine that we're going to do is figure out how we implement into our objective and OKR process the client feedback and the client health um, into our into our entire process. And it's going to be a major objective. So, um, and how do we measure that? How do we capture that? How do how do we show that um, our our different divisions are are driving up to that? Um, and we're calling an account management framework, um, you know, that's like heavily client focused. So we're we're making that change, and um, that means that profit's going to have to change with us. So. Great, excellent. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much, uh, Jessica. I'm sure. You know, the OKRs and performance management community, you know, highly benefit, you know, from your very valuable insights. 
that mm -hmm. now you are um, in the 12th quarter and beyond with OKRs and Profit Arco. We absolutely thank you for taking the time today and sharing your very valuable insights. Yeah, I, for one, am a big fan of this tool. Um, and I really don't think that my team could have um, achieved some of the things we have achieved without it, frankly. And um, so I'll continue to be an advocate <laughs> for this tool, no matter where I'm at. <laughs> but I'll be a kid for a long sure. time. But it's a it's a great it, it is it profit is fantastic and thank you for having me. Um, sure, we really appreciate it. Uh, you know, and have a great day.